राउंड वन Round two. Round three. Impressionism is an era-making art style in art history. It reached its peak in the 1970s and 1980s. Its emergency mainly consists of two historical reasons. First, changes in the physical world, such as the growth of railway system in France and the invention of candid pigments. Second, people's thinking changed at the time. Various ideological movements, for example, the February Revolution, changed the people's thinking pattern. The painters began to pursue self-expression, different from formal painters who only served customers. Therefore, it can be said that Impressionism is an inevitable result of the era's promotion. Consequently, it is non-fungible and is the representation of that era by art. There are four conditions to be an impressionist artist. First of all, painters need to paint outdoors. The intense outdoor light will affect people's eyes, making the light, shadow, and color of things different in every moment. This leads to a short painting time, so the shots will become more chaotic and disordered. The second point is that artists focus on instantaneous of the things, so they often repeatedly depict the same things to observe the impact of different sunlight on the same things. The third point is that impressionist paintings usually have rich colors. During this period, people have deeper understanding of color. The development of technology and theory made people more aware of the role of light on the object's color. Therefore, the impressionist painters had a more complete understanding of color. Different from classical painting, impressionist work have 
richer color in the dark area. The fourth point is that those paintings are more unrestricted and full of painter's passion. These paintings do not have a fixed composition boundary and do not use color according to rules. Artists can fully trust their eyes and recall their true feeling about the world. Therefore, compared with classical painting, which only pay attention to techniques and formula step, Impressionist paintings are more non-fungible because they record the light and shadow and the painting's feeling of a moment. These four points are the prerequisites for becoming an impressionist painter. It can be said that for the concept of impressionism, these four points are non-fungible and the rest are all fungible. However, for painters themselves, these four points are fungible. What is not fungible is the difference brought about by their life experience. These differences are displayed in every stroke of the canvas forming their own styles and being known by the audience. In a word, because Impressionism is freer, it allows painters to express what they want freely. Therefore, we can say that it's not Impressionism that shapes these painters, but painters that shape Impressionism. Impressionism and its regulation gradually become fungible, and non-fungible things now become the growth background, emotion, and personal preference of painters. This is why Impressionism has become a vital demarcation line in the art history. Since then, artists have stopped serving specific idea or theory, but have seen and recorded the world with their own eyes. This makes every artist and work more and more non-fungible. Each work represents a personal emotion at a specific moment that cannot be replaced. If you remove the arrangement, you will find the pieces with the same chords also share a similar atmosphere, but they are not exactly the same. So of course the non-fungible part of Chinese pop, I don't think it can be defined as non-fungible directly, because although these songs cannot be connected by chord progression, they have different melodies. If we compare a song to a dish, say tomatoes and eggs stir fries, then the melody will be the main ingredient of the dish, namely tomatoes and eggs, and of course as an aid to the melody could be its seasoning. Dishes with the same seasoning taste the same, but because of the difference in the main ingredients, they can still be counted as different dishes. For example, black pepper chicken and black pepper beef are definitely two different recipes, so the court helps create every piece of work that cannot be replaced, but it generally plays a supporting role. After analyzing the role of course in pop music, let's look at another component of music, melody. Is there a non-fungible part of the melody? Let's first introduce a concept, motif. Motif is the repetition of rhythms and small melodies in a main melody, and such rhythms and pitches will be repeated if a piece of music is to be remembered. The arrangement of motif in pop music is often bright and emphasized. Simple and amusing motif help us remember songs better, which is why they become popular. An interesting example is that if two tunes have the same motif, people will find them similar. Hello Tomorrow and You Love Her So Much are two tunes that are often compared in Chinese pop music. An analysis of their scores revealed that the rhythm and pitch of their accent parts in the section of the tune are very similar. This suggests that similar motifs lead to similar melodies. 
Let's take a look at works created by the same person with different motifs. These are a few excerpts from Jay Chou's Three Keys for Me a Song, in which the host randomly selects three notes on the piano. Jay Chou then used these three notes to improvise a few phrases. These three notes can be seen as the motifs for these phrases. From these audio recordings, it can be seen that even the same composer's work with different motifs sounds quite distinguished. So it can be said that having a unique and good sounding motif is a key factor in all pop music. To sum up, the motif is the most irreplaceable element in a pop song and the chords serve it. Like Jicho's improvisation, motifs are often a product of the composer's inspirational outpouring and have nothing to do with the arrangement. Thus the key part of a pop song becomes the centralized expression of the composer's personal philosophy. It could be argued that a widely known song actually covers the centralized trademark idea. For the film and television works, we look at two Chinese variety shows, Who's the Mother and The Truth. They're both role-playing suspension shows in Who's the Mother each cast chooses a role as a particular suspect or detective in each episode. Every suspect can conceal information until explicitly questioned by other players, but only the murderer can lie. However, in the truth, the actors perform as a detective group to investigate cases in a large building with non-playable characters. Most interestingly, Little Box Chen He directed both shows. She led Who's the Mother from 2016 to 2020 on Mango TV, but in 2021, she dropped Hope to Tencent Video and produced The Truth. Because Little Box directed both shows, they have many similarities. For instance, they both have on-site investigations, interrogations, and murder voting. Moreover, the way they name the characters and write stories is very similar. However, the outputs are very different to the viewers. Who's the Mother Season 1 is rated on averagely 9.4 by over 100,000 people, while The Truth is rated only 6.7 by 17,000 people. How does that difference happen? From our perspective, it can be explained by the organization structure of the two show. In Mango TV, Little Box has a right to speak, so the producer does not interfere with the content. Thus, the director, the actors, and the production team interact and communicate efficiently. Compared to Mango TV, Tencent has more capital and resources, so it has a more hierarchical production system. Therefore, Little Box became the intermediary between the producers, production teams, and the actors in Tencent Video. Her main task is to balance the interests and needs of various groups, instead of expressing her creative idea. The public's ratings of these two variety shows can demonstrate to what extent they can be replaced. Although the subject matter, director, and production team are the same, the fungibility of their output in people's minds is entirely different. So the non-fungibility of film and television works is independent of either the director or the production team. Furthermore, although Little Box, her team, and the main cast left the Who's Murder season 7, 2022, the show's overall storytelling style and the structure did not change. The public rated 7.7 .7 for the new season, which is much higher than the truth. Therefore, in this type of variety show, the real non fungible part is not the director, the guest, or the team, but the cooperative relationship and the logical framework of the production. In other words, the non fungible part is ideology, and the fungible part is entity.
So does the architecture conform to the same operation logic as the variety show, which is the non-fungible part is ideology and the fungible part is the entirety? We choose Jaha Hadid, an iconic architecture figure, as the research object because her style is the most recognizable and well-known in public. So if we apply the previous logic to this example, we can assume that the non-fungible part is Jaha's architecture style. The fungible part is all her architecture design. To prove this theory, we need to find out what Jaha's style and then find the design of other people with the same style as her. If the public can't recognize that it is not Jaha's design, it means that Jaha's is just a style, and it doesn't matter whether she designed the entity. First, we need to find the non-fungible part of Jaha's design. What are her concepts and style? We think her style is she changed all the straight line and rectangle in architecture into curves and radial angles, and combined two parallel lines through various kinds of curves, which make no straight line in the whole building. After that, we collect several of her work, the work of Matt that conformed to her style, the hand painting work of our team member Jaja who imitates her style, and the 3D painting model we made to simulate her style. We put all those things together for an exhibition, and the exhibition title is Jaha's Work Exhibition, to increase the interactivity of the audience and hope that more people can take a closer look at the exhibition item to discover the hidden secret among them. We use stickers to ask them both for their most favorite Zaha's design. As a result, not only did the design of Matt rank second, but also some people vote for the hand painting of Jaja and our models. From beginning to end, no one found the design work of others hidden in Jaha's work. Everyone defaults that these are all Jaha's design. The success of this experiment confirms our previous hypothesis. Only Jaha's style is non-fungible, and all her architectural design are fungible. Next, we begin to think about the next step. We want to know under what condition Jaha's idea, her non-fungible part, can be best realized. We start thinking from the three completed Jaha's projects. The first one is the Guangzhou Theater in China. In this project, Jia has designed to use different triangles of space and glass to create a complex space. To fully realize her idea, all Chinese engineers, construction teams, and theaters management have demolished their own view. Guangzhou's Urban Planning Bureau also make the surrounding building give way for a better presentation of the building. The second example is the Riverside Museum in Glasgow. The interior of the building is a large void space, but the exhibition arrangement is very improper with the oral curved streamline of the building. The interior of the building seems to be filled with trams, cars, bicycles, steers, and various types of objects. This may be the embodiment of the curator's own view, making Jaha's original internal space design concept become vague. In contrast, the outdoor of these buildings perfectly relies Jaha's view, so it has a good echo with the external canal and the surrounding environment. The third example is Galaxy Soho in Beijing. Inside the building, all the brand signs have been replaced with the same formats and color to give prominence to Jaha's concept. However, the external environment is very congested, and there is no enough space to show Jaha's view. Through these three examples, we can find that both the interior and exterior of Guangzhou Theater have obeyed Jaha's view, which is very centralized. The external of the Riverside Museum is centralized, while the internal is decentralized. The external of the Galaxy Soho is decentralized, while the internal is centralized. Among the three, only the Guangzhou Theater follows Jaha's concept both inside and outside. It's also the best entity that embodies the non fungible part of Jaha. So we can say that the non-fungible concept needs a centralized management structure. Conversely, we can conclude that to achieve decentralized purpose, we need fungible designs.